And thank you once again. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining us. Um, in a short while, you will be uh, hearing the voice of our guest speaker for this week. And for those of you who are <clears throat> perhaps joining us for the first time um, today, um, our speaker is Pastor Clifford Money. Um, I have introduced little bits and pieces of him throughout the week. And um, this morning, I just want to add that in addition to him being the recently appointed stewardship director of the Northeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists in the USA, <clears throat> prior to this assignment, he served as a pastor of the Staten Island SDA Church and uh, the Lighthouse Tabernacle Church of Seventh-day Adventists in Brooklyn, New York, um, and the Community Worship Center of Seventh-day Adventists in Queens, New York. And while he was there at the Community Worship Center, God blessed him with two major milestones. The one was that um, God helped him to increase uh, church membership. Um, and he also helped him to complete the construction of a $4.3 million church building project, an exceedingly magnificent sanctuary to borrow from the words of First Chronicles 22 verse five, befitting the worship of almighty God whom he worships. And uh, we thank God for the privilege of um, being ministered to by you, Dr. Mani. And uh, we pray that God will be with you this morning once again. Over to you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> it's been uh, my pleasure and my privilege to be with you uh, for the past uh, three nights and today make up four nights together. So but I can see your faces. I only see one face on this platform. And also I hope that for the past three nights that you have been blessed because as a preacher, I'm used to people talking back to me, but on the platform you speak, it's very quiet. Sometimes I wonder if you are hearing me or if the message is getting across. I, just had to depend on the Holy Spirit. That said, the past, uh, for the past uh, three nights, we started, our theme for this, for this week is Made for More. And we have dealt with subtopics like intentions of creation. We are included last night, perceive, to possess, all right? So, and the, tonight is on the subtopic, uh, on the main topic uh, made for more tonight, our subtopic is out of focus, out of focus. Father in heaven, speak to our hearts even now in Jesus' name, amen. Many years ago, around 1998, uh, I visited my homeland, Liberia, but before that was my first time going there since 1982, when I left from there, I never been there until 1998. That was about 16 years later. So I was anxious as I was going there and I wanted to take as many pictures as possible to bring back for memory. So I bought me this uh, brand new camera. I paid about 500 and some dollar for it. It was a nice camera. Uh, digital camera at that time, uh, not digital, it was maybe a semi-digital, but you need to carry the film so that the people can develop it. So I went to Liberia and I took a lot of pictures. Well, I came back and when we developed the picture, a whole lot of those pictures were just blurry, it looked so bad. And I said, what is the matter with this? The guy said, um, it's your camera. Maybe it's a cheap camera. So I got annoyed and I took the camera back to where I got the camera from about maybe a month earlier. And I took the camera back and the guy looked at the camera and he saw it and he said, he said, sir, the camera is out of focus. I said, what do you mean? So he said, I will take your picture. So he, he did, he focused the camera, uh, the lens of the camera, which I didn't know anything about. And from that point on the picture, 
the pictures that were taken by the camera were crystal clear. It was so beautiful. And just because I did not know, I thought something was wrong with the camera. What really was wrong with the camera is the fact that the camera was out of focus. So tonight, our subject is out of focus. When God created us on in creation week, uh, we started with this, uh, uh, this the first night, everything that God created, he said it was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. Or it is good. But then when he got to the creation of man, God said it is very good. It is very good. So when God created us, he created us as near as possible to creating himself. If he had created any more than he did, he would have created himself. So we are created lower than God himself. That means God desire, his intention for us was that, as I've been saying for this week, God has created us with immense power. He pulled all of his created ability, his created power into us, into mankind, and he expected us to populate the earth, not only by duplicating ourselves, but by birthing other uh, uh, other things into the world, that all of the things that we see now, birthing ideas, new idea, we are a birthing machine. We are supposed to come up or uh, give birth to children, give birth to ideas, give birth to all of the things that make life comfortable. We were supposed to create those things. God placed it within us and gave us all the raw material to do so. Then the enemy of God, uh, we read in the book of Revelation where he said, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth for the, 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 the serpent, that old serpent, the devil, has come there. So the devil came here, the serpent came, and he lied to us and put all of humanity in the cage. And he placed, he placed us in this box. So he put a limit, placed a limitation on each of us. For 4,000 years, we function. And for 4,000 years, God sent different prophets to come and try to remind us of who we are. But for 4,000 years, we were out of focus. We, when we were seeing of ourselves, were totally out of focus. We thought that's the way we were created. The brightness of with which we were created were, had disappeared because of the lie that was told to us. So for years, we are under this lie and we function under it. And while we were there, we got comfortable. We begin to use vocabularies uh, like fear, a lie, all kinds of things are happening in there. And so 4,000 years later, God, uh, uh, in, in uh, Hebrew chapter one, it said, God who in sundry time uh, spoke to us through the prophet is in his last days has sent his son to speak to us. What all of the prophets put together could not bring out a man. Jesus Christ came 4,000 years after we have been soaked in lies. He came under the law that he may redeem those that are under the law. Galatians, I believe in Galatians chapter four. And now Jesus Christ came and did something for us because for 4,000 years, we believe of ourselves because of the, 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 the out of focus image of ourselves that we have. We thought that was the real way God, God had created us. We accepted the lies of us. We accepted the devil lies of who we are as our true self. And we begin to function through that lie. So everything that we did, everything we did was consistent with our new uh, uh, brain wash brain so that our brain our brain our brain washed attitude we approach God that way so much so that in first Corinthians in first um in in chronicle in not chronicle in uh, Colossians Colossians 121 Paul said uh in the past we have been alienated from God an enemy of God in our own mind. We have never, in God's mind, we have never been his enemy. But you know, because of the wrong deeds that we have committed, we make ourselves enemy and we don't even know, we don't even fully comprehend the love that God has towards us. And so because of this, after Jesus came and showed 
how we can live a limitless life. He, he set us free by breaking the entire walls of the prison of the cage and then shattering the glass that were over so that we now can fly. At this point, even the star, the heaven was not even the limit. We were to have no limitation, but, for, but because we have been conditioned to believing that we were limited, to believing that we were who the enemy had made us to think of ourselves, not knowing that we have been out of focus. So everything that we do is actually out of focus. The thing that God created us to do, we don't do it anymore. We turn everything upside down. When you are out of focus, everything is turned upside down. So uh, uh, now our operation, everything we do, it doesn't survive, it doesn't succeed because of who we believe we are. And that's a lie of ourselves. So in the book of John, and they, this story is recorded in almost all the gospel. In the book of John, John chapter six, we see a story. We see a story in the book of John where Jesus had been preaching all day. All day he'd been preaching. And then Jesus himself get tired. He retrieved with his disciples to the mountainside. And while he was there trying to rest, when he raised up his head, uh, he probably lifted his head because you he were hearing all this noise. When he lifted his head, he saw a multitude of people coming towards him. And when he saw all these people, it was the same people that he'd been preaching to. He talked about retrieving to the, to the mountain. Each of these people were going to go back home so that they can get something to eat because they've been there all day. But when Jesus saw that they were still hungry for more and they were coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Philip, where do we buy bread to feed these people? And immediately Philip, with his distorted view of who life of what life really is, with his distorted view, with his out of focus view, he focused strictly on the problem. You see, because of the enemy's lie, we function from cause to effect. When God created us, he created us so that we can function from effect to cause. And I will explain that. So uh, immediately when Jesus asked this question of Philip, from where we will get bread to feed these people. Philip said, wait a minute, Lord, even if we have a half of year wages to buy bread, that bread will not be enough to fill these people. It will only be enough for each person to just have a bite. And then here, come, here comes Andrew, uh, Peter's brother. He said, well, Lord, he even magnified the cost even more. He said, Lord, there is a little boy here who have five little dumplings, we call it color back home, five, you know, little boy's lunch, five little uh, bread, five, and then two sardines, you know? But then he added, he said, but what is it to the number of people that are here? Some commentators said, while the Bible said 5,000 men, there were women and children there, so the estimated number of people that were there that needed to be fed, including the children and the women who were not counted would be approximately 20,000 people. You just imagine, do the math. And now we're talking about a little boy's lunch. And, and, and Andrew said, but what is it? They all were focused. Andrew and Philip were focused on the cause rather than the effect. And so Jesus is trying to give an object lesson here to the disciples as he wants to give to us today. So Jesus says, let the people sit on the ground. And they sat on the ground. Jesus looked up while his disciples were looking at the cost of how much it was going to cost, the enormous cost that were placed under the insurmountable challenge of feeding these people with a little bit that they have. While they were looking at the challenge, Jesus Christ didn't see that. Where Jesus saw which I submit to you, we need to see in our prayer life is that Jesus focused were not on the cause, but his focus were on the effect. Jesus' focus were on the effect. In other words, Jesus' focus were on the end rather than the beginning. Jesus' focus were on the value rather than the cause. So when Jesus focused on the effect, 
he was able to see what the disciples could not see. So in his mind's eyes, he was able to see 20,000 people being fed with a little boy's lunch and also saw 12 baskets full of that being left over. Everybody ate until they were satisfied. Jesus saw that. Before it happened, Jesus saw it. And when he saw it, guess what he did? Jesus stood there and said, Father, please, please, dear Lord, please, can you please help? These people are hungry when we take them, when we let them go, some of them will faint on the way, Lord, can you please do something? Just feed them. Jesus didn't do that. You know why? The reason Christ didn't do that, he didn't pray that way because whenever you pray that way, you are uh, you are giving a command that is a wrong command to God's creation. Remember, all creation is placed under you. You are telling the very creation you're supposed to command to make the things happen. You are telling the creation such a thing does not even exist. The possibility of such thing happening is not there. When you are begging for something, you are asking for something, you are begging for it, it does uh, uh, Lord, please bring ring for us. You are suggesting to the entire God created universe that there is no such thing as rain. So you, the real prayer, the true praying will be for you to imagine in your mind the rain falling. You need to actually see. We said that last night. Perceive to possess. You need to literally see in your imagination, in your mind's eyes, you need to see the rain falling and then you thank God. That's a, a more effective way to pray. So Jesus looked up, and what Jesus saw was precisely what was about to happen. Jesus saw 20,000 people being fed with 12 baskets left over, all of them full. And when Jesus saw that, then he said, thank you, Father, for this. Thank you. Jesus just thanked the Lord, and then he took the little boy's lunch and began to, to divide it. And the Bible said, if you read the story, it said all God, synoptic gospel writers said that all of them were filled, couldn't eat anymore. And Jesus said, pick up whatever is left. And what was left was about 12 baskets full. Jesus focused, and he teaches us to focus that way. Our focus always ought to be on what our end goal is. Our focus should never be on what the problem we're trying to alleviate is. When you focus on the problem, the more you focus on it, the focus in, impress that particular issue on your mind. And whatever occupies your mind comes out of your lips. And when it comes out of your lips, it becomes things in your life. So Jesus' method is for us to reset the focus. Reset the focus because who we were created to be were to opt to function not from cause and effect, from cause to effect, but to function from effect to cause. When you always look at the end, by the time you come to what the cause is, the end has convinced you to the point where no matter what the cause will be, you will say, wow, I like what I see. So when you visualize what it is you're looking for, it makes the cost to be less. Now, this is Bible because if you, when you read the story of Joseph in, in uh, Genesis, I believe in the 39 area, Joseph, Joseph had a dream. And in Joseph's dream, uh, God did not give Joseph the cost. What God revealed to Joseph was the effect. What God revealed to Joseph was the end result. What God revealed to Joseph was exactly where Joseph was going to be. He never revealed to Joseph what Joseph would have to pass through in order for him to get there. What Joseph went through to get to be a prime minister of Egypt was the cause. Now, I believe that if Joseph, if God has focused on the cause and gave Joseph a dream, telling him what he would have to go through, I bet Joseph would never have stood or told his father and his brothers that they bowed before him. All Joseph was able to see was 
being a prime minister, being a position where his brothers and his father, his whole family would bow before him. But the process that it took for Joseph to get there was a different process. But you see, this is how God expects us to function. Our function and our focus should always be on the effect. Never, never, ever on the cause. Because when you focus on the effect, the, 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 you see a clarity, you see the, the, the camera lens, now we take a better picture of who you are. You will be able to see who you really are, the power that is within. John said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Paul said that that which was mysterious in the past, Colossians 1, 27, is now being revealed to us. And what is that? And that is Christ in you, the hope or the power and love of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, I know you all can't talk to me, and I wouldn't hear you when, you when you try to talk to me, but think about this. You have no problem, no problem, absolutely no problem, that Jesus Christ can do anything but fail. You have no problem with that. You absolutely have no problem. Because you believe that Jesus is God, that Jesus cannot fail. <laughs> but then Paul just said that they seem unfailing Jesus, the Jesus who cannot fail, that same Jesus with all powerfulness dwells in you. So if Christ who cannot fail is part of you, what does that make you? Think about it. And then we read from Paul last night, where Paul also called us in Romans 8, that we are joined heir to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, all the time he was on the earth, he never showed any sign of fear whatsoever. If he wanted to do something, nothing stood in Jesus' way. He walked on the water. And he even proved that by lying Peter. When Peter got it, he said, Master, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come unto you. And Jesus said, come. And Peter, now watch this now. Peter is standing in the boat. And the water, had, the wind has thrown a lot of water into the boat. And Peter and his friends, they were sitting and standing in the water that was almost filled in the boat, according to E.G. White. It was almost filled in the boat. And they were standing in the water, in the boat. Perhaps water coming up to his knees. And now here Jesus said to him, come. So Peter now is supposed to believe that where he is standing in, in the boat, he cannot stand on out of the boat. Think about that. At least in the boat, in the boat, he feels safe. There's safety because his feet can touch some solid ground. But now he is supposed to believe that the fluid thing that I'm now standing in, I'm not even standing on the wall, I'm in the boat. And Jesus is telling me now, Peter did not even reason out anything. Peter stretched out his leg to step out immediately when Peter moved in such a faith which is what Jesus wants us to do. When Peter moved in faith, all the creation, the way the water made itself sodded enough because it's God's, one of its God's were getting ready to walk on the water. But then quickly Peter, his faith failed him. You know the story. And Ellen White say, instead of Jesus lifting him up, which he could have done easily and walking back to the boat, which would have been humiliating him. Jesus' desire was not to humiliate, and his desire had never been to put us down, but to lift us up. So Jesus pulled Peter, and then he grabbed Peter by the hand, and he and Peter walked back to the boat. Jesus is trying to show to us that if I am in you, if you believe, believe in God, if you believe that I occupy your being, everything that you see me do, I will continue to do it inside of you, out of you, I will do it. You just have to believe and turn it over to me and leave the rest. It shall be done. 
reset your focus that way. And so as we close, you are more than wonderful. You are wonderfully and fearfully created, you and I. The power that dwells within us is yet to be unleashed. If only we will exercise faith. And I explained to you where faith is. When you visualize whatever it is in the future, then you need to be convinced that that wish you see is a picture of what is to come in your life. So you don't wait until it gets to your life before you start expressing the emotion of gratitude and love and excitement. You start, in, you start uh, 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 exhibiting those qualities, those emotions right now as if it's already here. And when you do that, all creation bend towards making that possible. From this point on, as you go into your prayer room tonight, think of all of your prayer that you're going to offer. Think of it in, in terms of effect, then the cause. Your focus should be the effect. The cause is not your business. The cause will automatically happen to make the effect a reality. Father in heaven, we thank you so much tonight for yet another night. Thank you for all of our guests. Thank you, dear Lord, for those who are joining us from every part of this globe. As we leave, may we from this day forward begin to recalibrate our mind, reset our focus in doing the things the way you would do. And we will see a new life birth through us and we will see different, the difference in our lives. Thank you, may this be our experience. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.